Hello everybody. This is an unexpected video, but I decided to want to make some type of video talking about Five Nights at Morals. You know, the game I made that I remastered two times. Now it's finally out. Almost it is almost gonna have another update, but by the time I'm recording it by the time I upload this video the update's already out. Where it's about Endo 3 coming out. So yeah, um anyways, this is basically a video talking about um how do I say this? About the game, you know. At least like before the updates. Like I feel like no, there were updates that were out for um this um what were the examples? Uh like the Christmas update which included Frost Morrow, the and the two classic updates that um include classic weather and um Endo three. So this is like um how do I say this? Like something like um this is like the main thing, like the like the pre update stuff. And uh, so I kinda wanna go step back before we actually get this up to talk about the past. About um the original version of this game. Um which was originally called Five Nights at Dolls. I don't know why. If if you want to play the original version right now, it's now called Five Nights at Mario's Origins. But basically, it originated with um with um these four main characters: Moro, Weather, Snow, and Phil, or Philly Fanatic. You might recognize Mario and Philly Fanatic. Mario, as in like the uh, plumber guy. What am I saying? The Mario from Super Mario Bros. That's what I meant. I don't know what I was talking about. And Philly Fanatic from the Philly, f f from the Phillies, you know. And with two new guys, or well, characters, Snow and Redder. I was with the for setup, and this was all based off of plushies I had. That's what I would say in one of the facts. So, um. Basically, I had a Mario plushie, a random red panda plushie, a um, a random snow plushie, and a Philly fanatic plushie. All were um basically, you know, you know, and um for Golden Freddy, I would I put in Luigi for it, but um instead, if you see in the game, it's a Golden Mario, as you can see. And there was others like Endo 3, something I, I I put in because based off of Endo 1. It made because um the idea of what was what if there was a Endo 3 that existed. And so yeah. Um the model of Endo 3 originally was um pretty terrible. There should be an image of it uh, right there, but um yeah. Um so and there was also other characters with them. Um there was Lefty. Lefty was included in this game. Sydney. I don't know why. I just had the idea of him. Also, there was, um, let's see. There was also originally Photo Negative Mickey. He's not in the current version, but originally there was Photo Negative Mickey. Just like an extra thing. Would have originally been like just ordinary Mickey, but I think because of issues, I put in P and Photo Negative Mickey, not the ordinary Mickey. Um, let's see what else is there. Um,. Um, comical shenanigans. I I'm just in the game troll page right now. You don't you don't see it, but I just realized I put something that said comical shenanigans. I have no idea what that means. So, I think I know what mild fantasy violence means, but not comical shenanigans. I have no idea why I put that there. Anyway, um, I think there was also Ink Bendy in this game. I had this model of Ink Bendy. It's pretty terrible, but it was still a model that I made. It was pretty cool. Well, all the models were terrible back then, especially Mario's. No, I don't know. Wonder was. I, should, I wonder who was the most disturbed. I should put in a vote to people who played the very original, just to see if they knew which was was the most uh, scariest. Moro, Redder, Snow. Mostly not Snow. Snow was just a meme. Um, Philly fanatic, Golden Moro, and the O3. Or Ink Bendy. Just they I should put that poll. I'm not sure if I am. There's a chance I won't or won't. But basically, in the poll is, what do you th what do you think was the most disturbed? What what was the most disturbing one for the for infinite for infinite adults? Mario, Redder, Snow, which most likely get the least votes. Philly Fanatic, Golden More, Endo Three, or Ink Bendy. 
Then you also have these other insane characters in for these um secret knights known as Knight A through um E. And let me explain what those are. I tell you with Knight I think it was Knight Yeah, not no, Knight A to G. Those are supposed to be referencing about how sometimes in the Mario games there's like these secret levels like World One A or World One Dash B. Want to take something similar to that, and they had insane characters in them. Like, um, I think, um, you might have seen, um, Game Sand. So, yeah, Game Sand surprisingly played this game. I have no idea how. It's just unsuspected. It's so weird how you played this. Ah, uh, nowhere. It's even in the thumbnail. But it's pretty nice. It's still unbelievable. Kind of wish he played Final Tomorrow's. If you guys would, are. Are gonna do, do it? I kind of would like it if you try to get Game Seven to play the current version. It's really great, as you can see from the gameplay. But um, hold on. I'm gonna go here to the video. I need to see if um, let's see, um, uh, what were the characters? Ah, okay, oh, okay. So for the characters here, um, if I can get. I cannot. Here we go. So there was Bonnet. Nightmare Mangle. Oh wait, Avenger Mangle. Yes, Avenger Mangle. Chris from Finance of Mac tonight. Rockstar Freddy. Scrap Trap. Wither Toy Freddy and Wither Toy Bonnie. Yeah, those were the characters. I think there was supposed to be like something in the mini game. It's supposed to be like. I think I know. This was not referencing. Honestly, this is now referencing the that one FNAF hanging on his bonnet location. It was now referencing that. It was just some mini thing where basically for some reason the um, the night guard just jumps into the TV and it would basically um since this was 1991 1995 there was a PS one in the pizzeria <laughs> yes a PS one and the, the game it had was um five, one night of bonnet and this was basically yeah, they had these all these characters. I think the most craziest ones are Adventure Mango, Chris, Where's the Toy Freddy, Where's the Toy Bonnie. People like Bonnet, Nightmare Mango, Rockstar Freddy, and Scrap Trap, they're not that crazy. They're just characters that were already in Ultimate Customize, so they're not that insane at all. But they are here. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to figure out their mechanics at all. I am. And there was also the office. I'm not going to show the images of it. I could. Maybe I will, but, um,. Uh, it had um red. It had Oswald, like as a prop. You had these cool posters. One with Mario poster that said "Let's go," and red is this, "Let's save the pandas." That uh, apparently I don't think that actually makes sense because I don't think back then people were agreeing to save the pandas because, like I said, this takes place in 1995, which is by then the two the 2000s is when people really start caring about the pandas and when they started saving them. And the, uh, the back, and the uh, back, I think. And like you were, they had this mechanic where you could turn around. There's really no purpose to it. I don't know why. You also have, you always start start with 150 percent power, and not 100. Oh. You also had, you were able to see the date. You could all see this by playing, watching game Sam and play it up. And um, it's, you literally see the date there. Um, Fun Time Freddy was in the back as a prop. You could actually see Mario. In his stage, because the Mario you see in the back, that's actually Mario, not like a prop. Those are the cameras. And each animatronic had their own specific stage. It wasn't like where they're all in the same stage, they all had their specific one. <laughs> and it, it kind of sounded unique, I guess. And stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, all their mechanics were weird. Redders. You had to flip, you, you, whatever, basically you had to like go into Freddy, so now you just had to click a button, a white button that will randomly appear. Phil, I have no idea what he used to do. Oh, wait. Wait, what does he do? Hmm. Oh, wait, he was like the puppet, where you have to wind the wind a generator. Mario, he just puts up random phone calls from the past, from phone guy. Um, Gordon Moore, he's basically a like Phantom Freddy, you need to use the flashlight on him. What else was there? Um. Oh, who else was there? Oh, Endo Three. He just puts up random. He just makes. He just screams randomly. When <laughs> he just screams randomly. Uh, Lefty. 
Um, he basically goes to the door. It would have been an uh, animation of him walking to the door, but a little too much. Originally. Um, let's see, what else was there? Um. Uh, oh, PNM. He would go to the vents. Ink Bendy, I think, based, I think there would be some type of weird option where you could just blacken out the whole room. And for some reason, he'll make him disappear. Um, or something like that. And such, so. Yeah, um. Um, and also, um, this is also gonna, oh, also about this video, we're gonna also put in a comparison part, because I did said in the extras that I would make a comparison video, and this is gonna be part of it, so you're gonna actually see the evolution of how this game has evolved, which is gonna be pretty nice. Anyways, um, let's talk about Night B, from all I can remember, it was about Suicide Mouse, and you basically, I don't know, I know it had Suicide Mouse in he was, he at, also, he was apparently the reason why the place burned down. No, wait. He was the reason of something bad that happened we were later on night six. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, night C. I forgot who was included. Hold on. I did have a video before everything changed. I swear to God. And I, that would show all the characters from that game. If I can remember who was in the game then uh, I know there was like almost over it was like almost 50 characters like almost like ultimate custom night so yeah this game was kind of like a crossover game of some sorts but not necessarily I swear I swear I had a here we go there you go a video called Baltimore is cancelled not really I showed the extras before I changed everything and stuff so um redder yeah, I go through all the characters in this. Endo 3, you can see Lefty, for negative Mickey. Okay, okay, this is where I start going fast. I'm gonna have to slow motion this down. This is gonna be a really long video, so. Okay, I think I went a little, okay, I, oh, 0.5. And no three. Hold on. Lefty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Just get more characters. Oh, come on. Phone negative Mickey. Ink Bendy. Ennard. Right. Ennard was in this game as well. I think he still is. Shadow Jolly. That's a fan made character I made up based on from the Jolly games. Okay, he's still going fast. And apparently he attacks you when you ran out of power. Yeah. You have Dark Oswald. Nightmare Dark Oswald. That's what happened. It's be um, it was because of Redder went insane night six and <laughs> messed up Oswald really badly. <laughs> I have no idea how. Funtime Freddy. Prop. Circus Baby. I think that's something involving with about, um, oh yeah, there was cloning. I can see, it literally says in the description, there was cloning in this game. That would be complicated. We have Wither Chica. Apparently was okay, but it's taken by Molten Freddy. Endo two, just an extras character. Why? W w why did I make? Okay. Oh, okay. What am I doing? Oh, don't tell me. Come on, show everyone. No. No. I don't actually show everyone. Don't. Oh wait, there's still jump scares. Oh look, okay. It looks like from Night C. It looks like there was Chica, Phantom Chica. Um. Oh. Oh, that thing. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Yeah, that character. I think I like it. That's Beach Bat from Bubblegum Simulator. I put in a Roblox character in this. <laughs> oh. I completely forgot. Let's see who else. Oh, Funtime Foxy. I think it was from Night D. Oh, then there's like some missing kid I don't know. Maybe Springtrap? Ah. Uh. Okay, looks like Bonnie and Fox, Wither Foxy, they must be from Night E. Clown, Circus Ender looks like. Oh, I know Scrap Chica was also in this game. There's a lot of characters that are in this game. And sadly, we're not going to be able to see them all. Darn. So much characters. And we don't even get to see them all. 
Also, there was going to be a custom night here, which would include even more crazier characters, as you can see. Well, actually, you can't see, but we would have had the puppet, Phantom Luigi Annette from Final Fantasy Sonics, and Salvage Golden Sonic. And surprisingly, the person who won was Salvage Golden Sonic. So, if I still had the original plan to use the custom night, he could have been in. But he's not. And he won't be. Because <laughs> I'm done with <laughs> using other characters. Um, anyway, so, um, let's see, what else is there? So, I guess we're gonna now try to go through the second remastered. I don't have the much, there were two videos made for this. One made by Rust, Rustier Renterner, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it, and also by Game 7. This game, this game is, um, kind of a band, it's pretty big, it's literally two gigabytes, and I don't, I actually know why, it's because of the cutscenes. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um. Anyways. Um. There were post nights in these games that were later remastered for the current version. So whatever post nights, some, well, at least some of them. At least like the first. At least let's see. At least post night one and post night three were remastered for Five Nights at Morrow's. Let me explain the. Let's see. Let's first explain the characters. These are pretty insane. So. There was first, um, there was, of course, Mario, Weather, Snow, Phil, Golden Moro, Ender 03, and who, Ender 03's remastered, not so remastered, as to the Ender 03 you can see in Final Fantasy Morals, but still kind of good. Like, half good. Um, let's see. Wait, did I say Moro or Mario? I don't know. Um, you also had these extra characters, like Fritz Smith. You also had the Mushroom. That Mario uses the fire flower that he also uses. Who else was there? Uh, there was a beta end of 03. I don't know what that was from. There was a there was also Golden Helpy and VR Spring Trap. Also some extra characters. Um let's see, what else is there? Oh also oh this actually collects this specific one, the sec, the first remaster connects to a couple of Roblox games that I had, where, where if you, where they all are seemingly different types of games, but they're all, it's all connected. It's very, it's really cool. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it it looks cool for my saying. Let me see the game. I want to see the games. Let me look at my profile. Uh, creations. Judge Key's place. You see might see me play these games, but um you had basically there was a basically there was a, a thing where you found a the green obby base. Basically where in the end you beat the uh, the this game in like the secret place. Like the main way to and it's just to find seven items. I'm not even sure the badge works. But with the green obby, if you find a secret area, you get space called green obby. You found the green obby, and uh, suddenly, you're in an area with your base, you're basically it will be the start of this. You're basically in the entrance will be the start of this game, the green obby. And looks like you have some, a badge called the end. You beat the obby, and again, there's this area where suddenly you're in the. Studios of Ben of like Benny and the Ink Machine is very cool. Which will lead to these two other games Benny and the Ink Machine 1995 mode chapter 1, which is basically chapter 1, but it's all messed up. And it's the same with chapter 2. And the end of chapter 2, it would lead literally in the end, it literally literally takes you to the entrance of Moro's, Moro's Pizza Land. It's, it's very crazy. <laughs> It's it's very crazy. It's very yeah. Anyways, we also have the um um. Let's see. What was I was supposed to gonna talk about? I forgot. Oh darn. I forgot what else I was gonna talk about. Oh yeah, the post nights. Well, the first post night was about uh the the power went out and you need to repair it. While Mario was, um, um, you know, uh, attacking you. Post Night 2 for this game was basically kind of like something, um, 
based off of event repair manual where you have to go to look at repair a couple of vents. Uh, post night three is basically where you discover that there's another floor, and the second floor is basically a basically basically what you see is basically the FNAF the FNAF one office, the FNAF four office from Ultimate Custom Night, and the FNAF two office. They don't explain what it is, but then like the current version, they reveal that this, this all this gets remastered to more, more floors, and it's later known to be called the Fazbear Museum, which is basically like a basically something that they were secretly gonna put in underneath Moore's Cafe just to tribute Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, something like that. Um, uh, let's see, um, what else can I talk about? Oh yeah, post night four. It was gonna be about. It was gonna be about. It was about riding a Fazbear. It's basically riding a Fazbear roller coaster, or something like that. It wasn't that big. You were like, uh, and then post night five. There isn't one, but you get this choice where you can either go the other way or the or the other one. The bad one, which is also still in the current Final Tomorrow's, is basically what leads to where um you go to a post night where you're basically. Um, exploring the sewers. It's really cool. I kind of wish I had footage of it, but I don't. But yeah, uh, if it's that, there's no way you're able to get to there. The game is so buggy. There's no way you're able to enter the sewer um, area. But anyways, um, let's see what else is there. Um. I need to think. I need to think. Oh yeah, night five. What happens in the end of night five is um Mario will pl will play will do his I will do the iconic Freddy does whatever the power goes out. And the fun fact, the song that plays is the uh, is what we, is basically some type of what I thought was an Italian version of the Torador March, something like that. Um. And um he hides in the vent and then goes to night six. And night six is crazy. Because you can free roam, and it's basically based off of Piggy. The world of game Piggy, where you have to collect for keys. And after getting the orange key, you get you get kidnapped and you get sent back to the Fazbear Museum, which will lead to Night 7, where you're dealing with Redder and Beta Endo 3, and the, then you have to wait for the door to be opening. And then with Night 8, it's literally a boss battle between you and Springtrap. Don't... We're just gonna say that's agony because that's the most logical reason how that that happens. Like um, that spring trap that he's fighting is like some agony type soul thing that he destroys. As such, um, what else is there? All right, now we're finally going to the current version of Phantom Mars. I know it's been a while. We we were talking about the past, but we had to, so we could later come to what is cool here. Basically, Mario's been changed to Moral, Philly Fanat has been changed to Phil, and Weather and Snow have insane upgrades. Let's first do a comparison to this one iconic scene, where it's basically the entrance. They have this in all the games, literally all of them. And all of them, and the comparison to all of them is very nice. I'm really glad how this came to do, to go. Next comparison I'm gonna do is I think it's like I guess uh, the entrances. They're all different, especially the one in Final Fantasy Mode. And fun fact: the um the the tables, like the tables you see, are literally a recreation of the tables that you see in the um Ali's map of Piggy Book Two. I have no idea how I was able to recreate them so perfectly, but I was because. I didn't like take the world box mode. I literally recreated those. No joke. I have no idea how. Then let's also comparison Mario in the from Final Tomorrow's Origins, the Mario from the first remastered, and Moro. This sort of compares on how much they've changed. And we'll also see Redder. Redder has a huge change. Of being. There seemed to be some red animal thingy to now starting to look like a panda, and now looks like a performer red panda. And yes, 
to some people, yes, he does kind of look like Felix. But it's, it, it's not Felix because Weather's a red panda and Felix is a fox or furletta as Tenus Fleet describes it in Piggy Acre Roleplay. You have Snow, that has a huge, also has changed a lot. You have the two Philly fanatics with Phil. We could show that comparison. We have the Golden Marios with Golden Moro. And that's all the comparisons. Because we're only going to be talking about six characters, not a lot of characters. No way. So night one, let's talk about all the mechanics because that's the whole point. Moro, basically at some point... Um, at random times, you can see him basically where he's gonna grab. It's basically where he's gonna, basically where he's gonna, you see his hand trying to get you. It's a really cool animation that I made. And basically, while he's doing that, you have to quickly you, use the fl fl flash beacon or faz cam. Really, it's a flash beacon, but because of how this surprisingly is in security breach as well, we're gonna, you could call it the fast cam. But it's called a flash beacon in the game. And also, here's another fan fan. Let's talk about the menu before we continue on with more mechanic. How the menu works. Once you first boot up this game, you're gonna see that the menu is basically the outside, like the entrance, right off the bat. But then after you beat the post night, you can see it's a picture of Redder and Moro. You can clearly see more, but Redder is literally hidden. And they're in like some type of dark room. Actually, it's more stage, but you don't know that. Then after you be post night two, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a footage of the vent. Yeah, the vent. It's gonna be a t you're gonna see Larry see the vent near you. After you be post night three, it's gonna show image of the entrance of the Fazbear Museum. And then once you be post night four, it's gonna be a. It's gonna gonna be an image of the um. Basically, the of the entrance. Now, this game came out before Security Breach, September seventh, and coincidentally, Security Breach has the same thing. So technically, I kind of predicted the Security Breach menu, where it's footages of different areas as you can progress through the game. So that's a kind of <laughs> nice thing I predicted. Anyway, from a court, more mechanic. Um. I always say this, um, after he go, um, once you use the flash baking, you, he should be dealt with. With Redder, he, you'll see him, exp you'll see him wandering through the bet building, and if you see him in the window, by the way, the, the Finance of Mars office is based off the FNAF 3 office. The whole map of Finance of Mars is basically a combination of FNAF 1 and 3. That's the whole point of Finance of Mars. A combination FNAF 1 and 3. That's literally the whole point of it. Although, the Flash Beacon is not FNAF 1 or, or 3. It's FNAF 5 and Security Breach. Flashlight, that's FNAF 2. But it has the panel. The panel does come back for Finance and Morals. But if you see him, you have to hold the light on him. Simple as that. Snow, it's basically like a uh, more more but you'll see her in the vents basically so make a sound so that you can know that she's there because she is kind of hard to see let's see well let's do oh phil phil's like foxy of course he has his own stage and how he works is basically um well he is he gonna and here's the thing you have to keep an eye on him it's not like you could just not like you could just you're able to deal with him if he wanders off the stage no um you have to keep an eye. Once he gets in the office, you're, you're, you're done. Because he'll slowly, slowly get to your office if you don't check on him. That's how he works. So, it is necessary to keep an eye on Phil. Golden Moro. He'll basically just appear randomly in the map and you must not stare at him. Same with the office. He'll appear randomly and you must not stare at him. Fritz. Oh, Fritz. Oh, eh, okay. Let's talk about Fritz. Or let's talk before we talk about Fritz. Let's talk about the post nights. Post night one, basically a remastered of the original one for Fans of Mario's. But what are the difference in the remastered? You can free roam. You have the glare instead of you instantly there. You literally you're in the office. The lights are off. You have a flashlight and flash beacon. You have to actually go to the area, which is pretty cool. It makes it more um um more sense. 
instead of you just instantly there. Post night two, your ba your base um apparently because of what happened um during the post night one, there was a gas that you had to escape through the vents. And what is there? Post night three, because of how well you're doing, you get a you get early access to see the Fazbear Museum. And um Post night four, there's a new door, and I think the new door is basically like uh, basically supposed to be like how doors like the how I say this the doors like can automatically open and close. I think that's what we were testing. They were putting that in for the um the entrance. And you also have the sewer ending again, which leads to a bad ending where Phil pushes you off and up a jump up a bridge and I I'm not you basically you're in a bridge, there's a cutscene where you're in a bridge. Phil sees you and he just pushed you off the bridge. Yeah. Way to die. That is important though. For Fun and Samores too. Because because of what happened in that sewer ending will after is important for Fun and Samores too. As you know, if you read the description, it takes place after what happened there and and you re and more realizes that um paragraph four never happened, so they have to go back and fix that. That's basically the whole point of um uh, Final Fantasy Morrisu, that's why it's called Fixing Time. They're literally fixing the timeline. That's the whole point. Um, uh, let's see, what else is there? Um, hmm. Uh oh. What was I gonna say? Um, was I talking about something about Post Night Three? Or, oh right, what was the whole point of top of them here? They were looking for tapes. Literally, in all three games, you look for tapes and they reveal secret stuff about the past. The ones in Final Fantasy Morris are the really coolest ones because some talk about right, about the bite of eighty three and eighty seven. I think some talk about sister the sister locations. One talks about Mike Schmidt, you know how he's turning into the purple guy well like his flesh is like how it like how because Ennard's in him his flesh rots the zombie and there's one about a person going to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza uh, I'm not sure what year um 2004 maybe and they see spring trap but not the spring trap you would see in FNAF 3 like a like a middle point spring trap we mentioned a sprinter that's not fully turned into the sprinter we know from FNAF 3, like a midway, somewhat midway point, I think. It was either a midway point or like, no, I think it was 1994. Like it just like a year after, like you, you just see him, like you just like he just started rotting. I, I guess that's what you would say. He just started rotting. So like, you know, basically, you know, like the suit. It's still yellow. It's not full. Of, it's not green like how it is in the in FNAF three. And um, there's not them. And there's no like tears. Well, I think there could have been at least one tear that was made, but not as much tears. Spring trap. Basically, I think that's what the table is describing. Oh, uh, let's see. Now night five, you get the iconic paycheck. You decide to come back for a night six. I guess it because because you. I'm guessing because you just want to get some overtime. But I think something happens in night six. Oh yeah, Fritz. Fritz happens on night six. What is Fritz? He's the phone guy from FNAF 1. Basically, there was a more suit that was originally going to be introduced for a vent because pretty fast the pizza shut down. And then there was never news. And Freddy decided to put the phone guy in him. That's basically it. How he works is basically... What I based them off of was basically like Hourglass and um, Fredbear and Spring Bonnie from Hourglass from Treasure Island. Um, Fredbear and Spring Bonnie from Return to Freddy's 2 Winter Wonderland. Where they're like a final boss. It's not as hard as them, but it, it can still be hard. Basically, if you hear sound, you, can have, you have to look at the cameras. If his eyes are like red or white... You stare at him until it disappears. If his eyes are red, you look away. Kind of like Spring Trip the Camp for FNAF AR. 
That's not all. He does sometimes appears in the office and you have to use the flash beacon. This is... Now, is this annoying? With him alone, I think you should be able to deal with him, but... There is a custom knight and he's... And you can customize him. And I've been testing him out with other animatronics. Him with other animatronics makes the game insanely hard. Well, not so hard, but it can be hard. Because you're gonna, you can, you have to try focus on someone else, and then there's like Fritch, and you have to check to see if his eyes are wet or not. Like that's the hard part. So yeah, I basically have made a hard game, but it's not hard. It's an easy game, but by the customization, it could be hard. So yeah, there's the extras that includes all the characters, a description about them. You have the jump scares. You have facts about the game. I don't know. I'm gonna show. I don't know. I don't think I can, I can read all the facts right now. You also have um. You also have behind the scenes of all this stuff. You also have the, where you can re talk. Let's talk about the credits. Yeah, the credits. I know there's the cutscenes. Like the cutscenes of Thomas and Fritz on the roof. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. They went to the roof because in the end of night six you have to go to the roof escape. Thomas survives. Um anyways, um let's see, what was I gonna say? Alright, the credits. I use the follow me song. Made by Tryhard Ninja. Why? I don't know, it just kinda fits how Father's More was kinda like a between point between FNAF one and three. But like this like leads up to FNAF 3 somewhat, kind of, somewhat. N okay, like it talks about Springtrap. That, f that fact there's a tape recorder that talks about Springtrap that you know this is like the midway point of FN like this is the game between FNAF 1 and 3, somewhat. Kind of. It, this takes place in 2005. Final Fantasy takes place in 2005. To make some... So, and FNAF 1 takes place in 1993, and FNAF 3 takes place in 2023. So, like, you can just, you can just see, like, the, like, it just, it's kind of between. I'm not sure what's fully between, but it's somewhere between. Between. Something like that. I think fully between would be, like, 2008. That would be, like, the, the between 1993 and 2023. Like, that's, like, that's the between point, I think. Yeah, it's the between point. I, I, let me think. Let me calculate this. Uh, yeah, it's the between point. <gasps> um, let's see. Um, so I need more. Um. Oh yeah, custom night. I I have found a way to make custom night, and it actually works. It's complicated, but it works. Like, you can customize the characters. I got fun time with these characters. Originally, it, there's only six characters. But, um, I'm making these updates where you can have multiple Moto closers. I'll, just, I'll explain them in other videos. Because I'm planning to have two more videos that talks about, um, Frost Moral, Classic Weather, and Endo 3. And another video that will talk about the three other Custom Knight characters. I won't reveal who they are yet. They'll be revealed in their trailers. But there are three. Let's confirm there are three more custom night characters coming out. So the challenges for the custom night are, I think, if I can remember, 420 mode. There's animals. 420 mode based off the the classic 24 420 edition. Animals talk about all the animals in the game. You know which are Redder, Snow, and Phil. There's Moro show, basically about three Moros: Moro, Golden Moro, and Fritz. Um, um, let's see, who else is there? Uh oh. Um, Night of Mis Misfits. Was that the fifth challenge? No, no, that's the fifth challenge. Um, it's the originals challenge. Which about all you, it's about the two original, the two OGs that have survived throughout all these remasters. Redder and Snow, they're the only ones that have survived through this. Well, at least until the updates. Now there's more OGs, Classic Redder and Endo 3, there are now other OGs. But these are like the two main OGs, Redder and Snow. Um, and last but not least, no, not, no, no, before the last one is, um, 
Now, I have Misfits, like the nice fits challenges you sometimes see. And the Misfits are Phil, Gordon Morrow, and Fritz. And the last one being Gordon Morrow, which basically all of them are 20, basically. And, um, how many stars are there? There, I think there's like four stars you can get in this game so far. I think. Maybe. Let me see for certain. Um, yeah, you get four stars. One is for the sewer ending, another is for the paycheck ending, which is basically after being night five. The escape ending, beating night six. And the night seven ending. That's what it's apparently it's called. Night seven ending. There's no other name. These other ones have unique ones, but this just it's not. But yeah. And also the Oda, oh, let's talk, I guess we could talk about the soundtracks. Um, most some of the soundtracks are actually made from FL Studios. I won't use it as much as the other games because it's just not good at making soundtracks. Um, the extra soundtrack that's used is basically the original FNAF One soundtrack, just for some nostalgicness. And for the custom night, it is basic. It is a slowed down version of a song known as Heartaches, a very old song. That, or if you, or people could also recognize it as the caretaker song known as "It's Just a Burning Memory." Yeah, um, this exact. I try to pitch it as the exact soundtrack of the Heartaches that was used for that was um for the Return to Freddy's Two rebuilt. As you can remember, we heard Heartaches in that game, so I just wanted to put it in this game for the custom night because it just felt, you know, nice and stuff. And, um, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, let's talk about the rewards you would get. Because I'm pretty sure there's people wondering what are the rewards you would get. Uh, so let me see. For the office, you would get the 420. For, if you beat 420 mode in the office, you would see some type of, like, um, stand for 420 mode. Something, you know, like that. For the animals, you, you unlock, you will have a weather plushie. Yeah, you'll get a weather plushie for that. Um, for the moral show, let me see what you, you unlock something for the moral show. Oh yeah, you unlock you lock something from the fact from the facts, which is fact five, where it talks about how this is all based off the plushies. For uh, let's see what else is there. For o OGs, you would have I think you get this new option called original game. Yeah, I think that's something new. And it doesn't work, you have to basically type it all. Because I don't know how the link thing works yet. I've tried to figure out to see if there's something, but I just can't find it. I don't know how it works. Um let's see. Oh, if you beat the Knight of Fish Bitch, you get a Fritz plushie. And for the being good and more, you'll get a, you'll get the ending thing and the four star. So yeah, these these are very different types of rewards you would get. They're not all just plushies and stuff. Some are banners. Only two of them are plushies. And yeah. And such. So um, is that it? I think that's it. That's all the things that we talked about. There are more stuff like we could talk about. I mean, like there are two other games that are being developed that are sequels. For example, you have Fire Nights and F FNAF Fazbear Fights f Number Fourteen. They found something. I could talk briefly about this, but I think I'll talk about this after this game comes out. But just to let you all know, this is something you should play before Fire Nights and Morals Two Fix in Time. Like this is canon to Fire Nights and Morals. You can already tell if you see the trailer. You can only tell that. Why? Because you actually see Moore's Cafe in these trailers. Well, that's the connection there. And there's also Five Nights at Moore's 2 Fix in Time. Which is the sequel to Five Nights at Moore's. So, yeah. I do have release dates for these two games, if you're wondering. I'll just reveal them later. For the... Um, I couldn't... I can say that... I can say that, um... There is a trailer going to be coming out soon for this. These are just teasers. A trailer will come out soon for this. 
Um, another teaser will come out um, at some point and a trailer. That's just how it's going to be. You're going to have two teasers and a trailer. That's how usually this is going to work. You have two teasers and a trailer. So, I think that's it. I'm all discussed right now. Hope you all enjoyed this video with me talking about the past. And I finally got a video to talk about Final Fantasy Tomorrow's. I'll have other videos to talk about the other games soon. So, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed. Please subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.